Hi. This video is for those of uh, you, and I've been there, who are having a lot of trouble having sticking with no contact. And I've been there. It's nearly impossible to not dial, text, respond, whatever. And it can take a lot of back and forth for a lot of us before we actually get it and it sticks, right? And you're always in danger because the research shows that they'll, they'll contact you, hoover you, whatever. Years can go by and you might hear from them. So the trigger of them reaching out is always going to be something that we have to deal with. And the pain, even if they're not reaching out, that we feel because they're not reaching out to us, right? There are actual videos about why aren't I being hoovered? And they tell you, don't, don't take that as a... As an insult, be happy about that. There's a whole world of thinking around this. Either way, if you're having trouble with no contact, um, there's a few things that I want you to think about, okay? You can think about your no contact and you maintaining it as your silent treatment to them. I'm not a tit-for-tat person. I just, I'm not. I don't think, you know, you did this, I'm going to do this and revenge and, you know, it's just not how I do things. But in this particular case, we have to throw out all the rules, okay? You need to do whatever you need to do to survive this, get through it, get on the road to recovery. Some rules are just going to have to be thrown out. So if it means tit for tat and you have to think in your mind, well, he gave me the silent treatment once a month for the past three years. Think of your no contact as a silent treatment. Silent treatment. Don't think of it as no contact. I'm dying to hear his voice. I'm dying to contact. Silent treatment. Just like they did to you. All those times that they gave you nothing, that you were begging and pleading with them to talk to you, just talk to me, just whether it's come home or come back or whatever it is. Now you give nothing. And again, it goes against the grain of who we are to behave that way. But man, this is survival. You've been abused. You have to really channel things that might not be you in order to get through it, right? And maybe that's part of the my last, you know, whenever it was, about you're not the same person going forward. You have to sit in your strength and demand from yourself that you're going to go forward and make it through this. However, whatever it takes. One of the dangers in breaking no contact is the thought that I should say one of the dangers in this kind of reasoning which makes you break no contact is it's like an arrogance isn't it we think I can fix him I can tell by what he said he's sincere if I just do this I know he'll be better mm. this time I got this I mean there's a million things you can say to yourself and all I have to say is no no. 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 The research shows, and it is absolutely just known, that they're not going to change regardless of what it is that we do for them. That is not going to make them change. So if you are sitting in no contact and you're having a hard time and you just want to reach out, I want you to remember their silent treatment. And I want you to think about spending the time during this recluse or while being a recluse, this reprieve from them. Spend your time creating your own space within which there is no screaming, fighting, crying, begging, pleading, threatening. I live alone. None of that is part of my life. I wake up every morning. I can see the sunset out my window. I choose to be happy. I choose every day to heal. I've been working on my environment a very long time. I've lived in this house 15 years. I said that before, but just exist. Just breathe. Light incense, light a candle, play music, exist in your own space. Just do nothing. Just sit here like this. Stare out the window. This is my window out here to the backyard. Stare at the wall. Paint something. Write something. 
exist in your own space, create your own energy that you want. Whatever you want from the world, you have to put into the world. Yes, we all know that, right? So if you want all of these things, but create that space, start with just you, right? The Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror, has always been my favorite Michael Jackson song, and it's one of my favorite songs. Man in the Mirror, change you first before you think you can change the world. Same with this narcissistic abuse. That no contact is part of you healing and creating a space for yourself. The man in the mirror is you. If you want to change your world, your little piece of the world, you need to change yourself. And that means getting away from this toxic individual. And the way to do that sometimes is cutting them off. And again, some of you can't do no contact. And I feel bad for those people. They have to see the person and deal with the person. Co-parenting, co-business owner, whatever it is. If you have the luxury of going no contact, look at it as exactly that. That's a gift. Many abusers have to stay in contact with their person. Can you imagine healing? God bless them. So look at no contact as your silent treatment back to them. They gave it to you. And again, I'm not tit for tat. But this is about creating your own space, your own healthy space within which only you can be. Don't allow them in it. And if you talk to them, reach out to them, and then you're aggravated because they didn't text you back or they didn't text you back the right thing or they texted you back a question or they didn't answer your question, or, it only leads to aggravation. Don't allow aggravation into your space. That's part of the no cut. This is your space. Okay, good luck.